Hello, world! What's up, guys? This is Dave Van Alken, once again, back again, on the Fight Banaz Podcast. How is everyone doing? Guys, we are wrapping up the week, and what a week it has been under our Fight Banaz Podcast banner. Uh, when you start the week off with the greatest pound-for-pound pound boxer of all time, Roy Jones Jr., coming on to talk to us. That's how you start it off. Uh, we had breaking news with Impa Kasanganai back on the Dana White's Contender Series show. And we are wrapping up the week with Bellator superstar Sergio Pettis. I cannot wait to talk to him. I met him over uh, last summer when uh, Dean Tool Promotions had a show. Uh, uh, Sergio's older brother, uh, Anthony, uh, was in a grappling match with uh, Georgie Masvidal, actually. And uh, Sergio was there hanging out. What a weekend we had there in Pensacola, Florida. One of the nicest guys in the industry. I've heard that and then got that on uh, firsthand. Absolute pressure. So I can't wait to talk to him. Here comes Sergio Pettis on the Fight Bananas podcast. One. All right, guys. Here we go. Uh, absolute Bellator superstar now. Sergio Pettis, my man. How are you doing? Doing good, man. Just chilling out. Uh, just got out, of, got out of a fight, so my body's a little beat up. But other than that, just uh, enjoying this beautiful day. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, it was funny. In the intro, I, I kind of forgot about this a little bit. Uh, met you last summer. Dean Tool promotion show. Your brother Anthony and uh, Masvidal was in that main event, the grappling event. Yeah, we were out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember, man, your brother was on the horse, uh, the cowboy there all <laughs> night. I remember we had some fun there yeah, in Pensacola. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good times. Good times, man. Great memories. Absolutely. But, uh, man, let's get into it. Um, one thing. So, UFC came back, they did the UFC Jacksonville, they did the whole fight island, and then boom, Bellator returns, they call it the Bellator Sphere, and then look at this, on the poster, main event, we got Sergio Pettis, how did it feel that uh, Bellator made a huge splash, a huge return, and you're the main event, you're the uh, you're the marquee? That's right now, Bellator main event, get to knock that off, but uh yeah, it was an unfortunate uh, fight fell through. One of the, I think, competitors caught the, the virus or something like that. So, yeah, um, that fell through, and then I was the next person up in line for uh, the main event. So, man, it was a blessing, blessing in disguise, and I got out there and had some fun and got the job done. Absolutely, yeah, against a tough kid, man. Ricky's a really, really good fighter. Um, but uh, your performance, I thought it was almost flawless, 30-27s across the board. I heard you afterwards saying, you know, sometimes you're looking for the finish. Uh, you know, sometimes it just doesn't come to be. Uh, you know, Ricky's trying to get the finish as well. But uh, how did you think your performance went first time underneath that Bellator lights? Oh, man, I thought it went good. You know, um, I went out there and get my, uh, did my job. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I went out there and did my job. I just uh, went out there and had some fun. You know, I've been in those main events before. I did uh, one with the UFC in, in Mexico City, and that one's uh, right. at elevation, so you know there's added pressure to that. So I felt like coming to this belt tour, when I just I felt good, man. I felt smooth. I just everything just came together. You know, I went out there, and my, my game flowed. Uh, obviously, some things I still want to work on, and a lot of stuff that I take away from that fight. But um, other than that, I felt like I had a good performance, man. I'm not too beat up. My face looks pretty good, so you know, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Absolutely, my man. Uh, face is always looking good there, Sergio. Um, you know, the UFC fighters are definitely been, uh, so positive about the whole fight island. How was the Bellator sphere? How did the, uh, you know, the whole Corona testing? How did you feel, uh, Bellator did? I think they, they did a really good job. Um, you know, they, they stick to the schedule. Everything was really to T. No, no flaws in their game, man. It was, it was awesome. Everything was so organized, and every time we woke up, we had a test. Anytime we went into the the place where we were working out, which we had our, our own individual workout rooms, we were getting our temperatures checked. So, um, you know, everything everything was good, man. It was a smooth fight week. First day, I had a quarantine for the whole day. So, uh, you know, right. I brought my PS4, started gaming it pretty hard. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was, it was a great, it was a great, great uh, experience. A uh, whole different experience than what I'm used to. You know, no crowd. It was a uh, Interesting. It was interesting. I liked it though. It was, uh, I could hear my corner pretty well, and I have fun. Really, and that's. And I kind of wanted to hit on that. I was next, so it's a great transition right here. Uh, having a teammate fight on the card. Of course, you're uh, big bros there. You got your coach there. It looked like you had a really good team. It, to me, just seeing it through the TV, it, you look comfortable. It seemed like you had you know good people around you. Um, you know, it, to me, it jumped off the screen. Is that you know easy to say? Yeah, yeah, man. I felt like uh, during that fight week, actually, my my cornerman didn't get there till Wednesday, so. They got there Wednesday night, had a quarantine. I uh, didn't get to see them until actually the fight day. So, wow. uh, you know, it was me and Roth and my teammate Jordan. 
Uh, we just did some workouts. You know, I stick to the game plan of what I thought I had to do and what I thought my coaches would want. And it, it was good, man. Uh, and everything played out pretty well. It was uh, mm-hmm. everything was set up. I had a uh, my my buddy Ian uh, Larios helped me with a nutritionist out there. So I had uh, chefs cooking up me meals for the week. Weight cut went smooth. Uh, it was it was a very professional week, man. I thought I had a, a great time. No, and it showed it showed my performance. I, I was just gonna say that. I was just gonna say that uh, everything adds up. I thought your performance, like I said, was spectacular. So it, that's you know jumped off Thank the screen you. to me. Thank you. Um, okay, so of course I got to ask. It's kind of the, you know that elephant question. Uh, you made that jump from UFC to Bellator. Um, yep. You know, I I I'm a first round management guy. You know, I talk to a lot of them down there. Yeah. Much much love. Uh, was it just literally just kind of getting the best deal, or where did you think went? What was the number one reason you know for the jump? You know, um, I think it was just honestly I I didn't want to jump at first. You know, I was like, you know what, I can do that. So. Um, you know, we just played the field for a little bit, you know, just be a free right. agent for once, you know, and I was like, uh, I guess I'll try that, you know, I was like, just, just see what, see what's out there. And, um, Belter came with a great offer and I don't know, I thought it was just, it was the right move. You know, I'm only 26 years old and I feel like, um, it was just a great opportunity. Scott Coker and them gave to me and Belter and I feel like I'm delivering for them and, um, they're giving me a great platform to be, to be me, you know, be, be more of Sergio Pettis and make a name for myself. Absolutely, man. You're making this too easy for me. Uh, literally, my next kind of topic or talk about was uh, you being 26. I even had um, I had a podcast over the weekend because to me it was a great combat sports weekend. I was actually live for Bare Knuckle FC. Uh, you know, we oh, had damn. we broke the Roy Jones news. We had a lot of that. We just had Hell Roy yeah. Jones Hell on. Yeah. Uh, UFC had a show. You guys had a show. So, so there was so much. And I talked about how, yeah, you're only 26 years old. You fought Cejudo at 23. Uh, like at 23 years old, there's not even a lot of mixed martial artists know where they're at or, or they're not in the big leagues yet. How does it feel to be, to me, uh, you're coming into your prime. I loved how your brother called you a young vet. I love that. Uh, to me, I just think you have so many great lessons, so many great experiences behind you. I can only see up and up for you. How do you feel at 26 years old having all that great uh, experiences behind you? Yeah, man, um, definitely great experiences. You know, I, I learned from my fights in the UFC, uh, the fights especially where I lost. You know, times where I feel like I had to make the most adjustments to my game. And you now I fought some tough guys, like you said, uh, Rob Fine. You know, I put on that name out there too. Rob's a, Rob Fine's a killer in the UFC right. and tearing people up. I moved up to class within like six weeks of the fight, you know, there's no way I could jump up to 35 after cutting to 25 like that. So you now I was just taking risk over there and it was, uh, it was a great experience and just show me where my level's at and uh, definitely experiences that I'm taking with me to the future, especially over in Bellator. And I thought I got to fight Triple C, you know, I got some rounds in with him and I, I, I you know, his game plan, what he did to me, I feel like a lot of fighters are going to have to do it to me. So, you know, it's just something I'm ready for. And, you know, I had, like I said, past experiences are going to help with my future experiences. So, Right now, it's sky's the limit, man. I just got to stay focused, got to stay um, humble, got to stay completely balanced spiritually, physically, mentally, and uh, keep falling in love with this game, man. There's always so much more to learn and so much more to do for myself. So, you know, I got a lot of time left, but time goes by quick. So uh, I'm just I'm just taking advantage, man. I'm taking advantage right now. Some good opportunities. For sure, man. For sure. And like I said, the same the fight before Henry, you beat uh, Brandon Moreno, who now is like maybe the number one contender. So that win looks so good on your uh, record back in the day. Uh, so, man, yep, unbelievable. Man. Uh, we got 10 fun questions for you. Um, you ready? Just first thing comes to your head. You ready, my man? Yep, let's get it. Let's get it. Um, your first job. First job. I taught Taekwondo. <laughs> my <laughs> only job, martial arts. There yep. you go. Beach or mountains? That's a tough one, man. I love both. Depends on, I guess, my vibe. But right now, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like a beach right now. There we go. This is a kind of a tricky question. Who is your favorite combat sports athlete ever? My favorite would be GSP. GSP is my favorite. There we go. Uh, who is your hero? My hero would be my mom. She's done so much for me, and my brothers, and sacrificed so much and brought us into martial arts. So I'm completely uh, blessed to have her in my life. That's awesome, man. That's real talk right there. Um, what's your favorite candy? Favorite candy? Damn, man. I, I kind of <laughs> fell out of love with candy as I got older, but if I had to choose, I would say um, Snickers. Snickers. There you go. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Always satisfied right there. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> outside of mixed martial arts, what's your favorite activity? Fishing. I love fishing. Right. We see you out there. You, you guys went there in Pensacola after the fights, right? Last year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were out there uh, fishing for some red snappers. It was a good time. Hell yeah. Um, I love this one. This is a good one here for our podcast. Who would play you in a movie about you? Who would play me in a movie about me? 
Damn, that's a hard one, man. I feel like I'm not too good with uh, actors' names right now. Or, yeah, I don't know if anyone looks like me, so <laughs> uh, I, I can't answer that one. All right, maybe Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> Transformers. <laughs> oh shoot, I love that. We'll we'll get that. We'll get that back. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta figure that out. In 2025, where will Sergio Pettis be? 2025. Let's see. So I'll be 32 years old. Hopefully a champion of an organization um, and continuing uh, holding a belt for a bit. Gotcha. Uh, last two, um, what's your favorite item in your closet? Favorite item in my closet would be um, probably my cutoff sweater. I love cutoff uh, sleeveless sweaters. I don't know why. It's just a easy look for me. <laughs> the, the Bill Belichick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, last one, my man. This is Sergio Pettis, guys, here on the Fight Ass Podcast. Uh, dead or alive, two people to have dinner with? Say it again one more time. I couldn't hear that question. No problem. Uh, dead or alive, two people to have dinner with? Dead or alive, two people to have dinner with. Um, I would say Bob Marley. Mm. And... Uh, Jesus, man. I feel like Bob Marley and Jesus. That's that's I'd try to yeah, have dinner with. There you go. Uh, a yeah. lot of stuff. A lot of that's a good conversation right there. Oh, oh yeah, my goodness. That's be deep. Uh, for sure. My, my uh just continued success. We're big fans from you from afar here on Fight Bananas. And uh yeah, we cannot wait to see your next fight underneath that Bellator banner. Guys, Sergio Pettis, Fight Bananas, man, appreciate your time, brother. Hey, thank you for having me on, brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate Any, you guys. Anytime, thank you. Bye. Have a good one. There we go, guys. One of the absolute best bantamweight fighters on this damn planet, Sergio Pettis on the Fight Bananas Podcast. And I'm telling you guys, I'm take a second. You know, if you're driving, go on your cell phone and drive. Now, I'm playing, I'm playing, guys. Pull over or when you get to your work or to your home, whatever it is. Guys, check out Sergio Pettis' lineup. Go to Tapology or wherever you go. God, he's fought literally the best of the best bantamweights of the world. Uh, you know, veteran guys. He he's beat names that you'd be like, wow, Sergio beat that a couple of years ago, three, four years ago. Absolute murderous lineup, and that's why I think this is perfect for him, man. He's he's went through it all. You know what I mean? He's went through these trials and tribulations, multiple rounds. Go back and watch the Sahudo fight. He was piecing them apart on the stand-up. And then Cejudo does. You know, he's a gold medalist wrestler, one of the greatest fighters, you know, ever. Uh, you know, God, he was piecing up Cejudo. I'm telling you, go back and watch it. So thank you so much, Sergio, uh, Sergio Pettis, guys. Give him a follow on the IG at Sergio Pettis. I uh, can't wait to see his next fight underneath that Bellator MMA uh, banner. But here we go, guys. We are rolling. We are ending the week off uh, just in the... You know, a banner week for us here at Fight Bananas. Like I said, Roy Jones Jr., we recapped a great weekend uh, of uh, fights. We got fights this weekend. We got a great main event with Brunson and Shabazian. Uh, Bellator is going to be back soon. So much great content. And then we are so pumped. The Contender Series is back next week. Uh, we just had the main event. We had uh, Kevin Seiler on. We had Ty Flores on. And then, of course, we broke the news here with Impa Kasanganai fighting on the August 11th show. We are humongous fans of the Contender Series. So, so much is going on. Oh, man, one thing I forgot. I had it here on my list. I forgot to mention it to Serge. I really wanted to see, um, you know, pick his brain about, you know, that rumor just keeps on popping up. You know, you keep on putting stuff on social media and people keep on liking it. People see it. Is Anderson Silva and Anthony Pettis, are they going to get in the ring? Are we going to lock the cage on this? That would be an absolute epic fight, uh, you know, at the Apex or Fight Island. We'll see. Uh, Pettis Silva. It's just one of those fights you would thought you would have never seen or seen. Um, man, you know, maybe we got to, uh, I'll text, uh, Sergio about it. Well, you know, we'll break the news somewhere, but so much is going on here, guys. Thank you. So all the supporters, all the, uh, sponsors, Warhammer Fightwear, Fusion CBD products, guys, check them out at fusioncbdproducts.com. Get 20% off your order. Put in fight 2020. That is fight 2020. You guys get 20% off your full order, body cream, the drops, the water, whatever you need. Fusioncbdproducts.com. Thank you so much to RetroGrappler.com. Check them out. They have some of the best gear, all those rash guards. You want the G.I. Joe, Star Wars, X-Men, Saturday morning cartoon stuff. And there might be a brand new Fight Bananas uh, rash guard. You're welcome. RetroGrappler.com. 
But guys, we're running. We've had a really packed week. Uh, you know, hey, I got to go home. I got to kiss the babies. I got to uh, help with dinner. So guys, thank you so much for listening, downloading, subscribing, watching. Thank you so much to Sergio Pettis. Much love and appreciation. We are out. Have a great day, guys. Stay blessed. Uh, stay bananas. Make sure you keep watching, listening, liking, sharing. We appreciate all you guys out there. I'm Dave Inaukim. This has been another edition of the Fight Bananas Podcast.